Hello Dreamers, welcome back on my channel. Today I want to show you how I made this scene, from how I set up the elements on the timeline to the work cycle animations. This little project is very important because it's the first one I did on Dreams 2 during the beta phase and I'm very satisfied with what I managed to achieve especially by using the new tools such as the flipbook. So I recommend you stay connected until the end to discover all the secrets. The animal project is moving forward and I'm happy and proud to tell you that only the final sequence is missing. Obviously it's the most complex, but I hope to be able to finish everything by February. As always I invite you to like and comment on my videos, the channel has reached the first phase of monetization, it would be important for growth and support if you hyped my videos, anyone who wants to contribute is also active on Super Thanks. And of course without forgetting to subscribe. But uh, let's start today's tutorial right away. First of all I want to tell you that the project is about 60 frames per second. This is because the animations are all rigged and there is nothing frame by frame. This allows me to have better fluidity. As always to speed up I try to create all the animations in a rig. In this case it was quite easy because for example for the character animations it's easy to create a doll system to make a walk cycle. On the timeline we have the scene which contains all the elements such as the background, the characters and the smoke effects. This layer is basically a completely black layer that serves to reveal the scene at the starting point. This creates a bit of a fade in to the scene since it's the one in the project I added an entrance phase. This instead is a filter that I added a brown color to give a tone to the scene. I wanted something warm that reflected a desert environment. It's simply a single color added over the scene, like a photographic filter. As in blending mode, the overlay allows you to show what's underneath. This allows us to directly create a filter here on Dreams, without having to do anything on other software. Last but not least the noise filter to give some organicity to the scene. This dotted effect which is a bit reminiscent of a grain of a photograph gives a more real feel to the scene and also helps to blur the edges of the elements a bit. I have already made many tutorials on the noise filter. If you don't know what it is I recommend you go and find them I leave you the link below. Now we can enter the group. Here we obviously find both the elements of the scenario and all these skeletons trying to advance. But let's start from the background elements like this one for example. The levels that make up the ground there are three and on these levels I made parallax animation. This one you see in black is basically the most foreground layer. Then there are two more behind it. These layers move on the x-axis from right to left and obviously the closer it's to the viewer the faster the shape will go. But without all the elements above you can see it better. It's a simple 2D parallax effect, a topic I have already covered a lot in my tutorials. I recommend using, as in this case, at least three shapes that move from the fastest in the foreground to the slowest in the background and remember to use the linear curve for a constant movement. The parallax effect is further emphasized by the presence of this smoke effect, also in this case the layers simply move from right to left. The parallax effect is therefore given by the background elements that move, 
If, for example, I go back outside the group, what I have done as a camera movement is this initial descent from the bottom to the top. While all the other keyframes you see that I made with the performance tool to move the scene a little to make the shot more realistic. And these jolts that you see serve to emphasize the steps of the advancing skeletons. Parallax effect and camera movements for the construction of the scene. But now let's come to the lighting effects. Here, very simple. I simply added this blurred shape. The skeletons are walking towards the light. <laughs> I just left the shape there without adding any animations or filters on it. Only at the end I'm going to increase its scale, this to create a fade out effect to the scene. Let's go to the most difficult part of the project, that is the animation, the skeleton's walking cycle. I have to be honest, it took me a while to get to this result, but I think it was worth it. It was difficult to get the timing right for the animation first. I wanted a shaky and slow walk, but not too much. It still had to look realistic and above all a walk that inspires fear and power. To better understand all the steps, I'm going to copy the group that contains the character and paste it into a new project. New project. Okay. New track and past. This way we only see the walking cycle of the skeleton. We also give a more colorful background so as not to blind anyone. <laughs> like this light blue. Ok. This animation is made up of 6 steps in total and as you can see it also advances a little from left to right, essentially in the opposite direction to the entire background. It's a walking cycle that's a little different from the usual one, with this slow pace. If we enter the group we find other groups. And you have to imagine that for each group there is animation for two steps. And this is primarily to avoid having to repeat the animation several times in the timeline. But you have to be careful that the first and the last pose of the character are the same, so that you can perfectly connect the walking cycle. The walking cycle is made up of some phases, a keyframe that we need to know. In this case I first had to do something different than usual, and that is to invert the up and down phase to obtain this animation. The group contains a complete two step cycle as I said before, where at the beginning we have the right leg forward and at the end the right leg again, this is to connect all the subsequent steps. Now I'm going to take off the clock to focus on the body elements. Maybe I need to pixelate the skeleton. It's a bit naked now. <laughs> we can see better the animation regarding the walk. There is another very important aspect to see that I will now show you. It was difficult to understand the right timing to give to the animation and after several attempts a complete cycle of two steps lasts 4 seconds essentially 2 seconds for each step. As I was saying, I wanted a slow, heavy walk, but at the same time one that had strength. What do you think of the result? If we enter the group, now we find all the elements that make up the skeleton. It's essentially divided into two parts. The part of the torso, which includes the head and arms, and the lower part, the legs. And as you can see there is a part of the torso and the left arm that are under all the other groups, because they have to remain behind the other levels. This arm mainly needs to stay behind the rest and to achieve this result you just have to create all the animations you need within a group and then duplicate it at the bottom, removing the elements from both that you don't need. I'm hiding this for a moment, 
but keep in mind that uh, this group has the same identical animations as this other one. If I go to rotate, its anchor point is in the basin. Same goes for this one. Then there are the groups that contain the legs and the pelvis. In addition to the rotation of the legs for the walking cycle, I added another movement, namely the movement of the pelvis. The groups containing the elements of the lower limbs essentially go forward and backward according to the steps. I then worked on the x-axis by changing the values based on the position of the leg forward 40 and back leg minus 50. This obviously for both legs, I think it's an interesting addition and gives a touch of three-dimensionality to the animation. But now let's come to a much more important aspect of the legs animation. To avoid the character sliding on the ground instead of walking normally, we have to make sure that the shape remains on a line. Usually, to avoid this problem, I add a rectangle under the character's feet. And now that I can use the selection tool to make one, why not take advantage of it? <laughs> a color fill, ok. I'll fix it here, ok, I'll move it below. If I start the animation, as you can see, the feet stay above that line. So in addition to making the legs move, we should also move the whole character up and down. Even the tip of the sword remains tied to the ground, as if the skeleton was dragging it. This also creates this wobbly effect, as if there were some stone or furrow in the advance and the sword gets stuck. This is a secondary animation that completes the movement of the arm, secondary animations that we will have the opportunity to explore in the future. There are secondary bounce and drag animations on the cape too. Even in this case I tried to follow a line. The cape must seem to always touch the ground, having a shape that modulates based on the stresses of the steps and the dragging on the ground. I'm not fully satisfied with the result. I think I'll work on it a little more to get something more realistic. But using a movement and scale animations combined with shape alteration, I think is the basis. There are many other secondary animations such as the head and the legs, but as I told you before, uh, is a topic that deserves a lot of attention and I will make a dedicated tutorial just for it. For each step I also added some smoke effects that are really simple but that complete the scene in a really interesting way. They are little clouds that appear from the ground and vanish towards the left, as if there was a little wind that moved them. Leave it like this, obviously it seems like they suddenly appear out of nowhere. So now let's add a layer mask. On Dreams 2 they are called alpha masks but they are the same ones we found on the previous version of the software. I take this layer directly and apply the alpha mask to the group containing the smoke effect. And now invert. I'd say it's a little too high. I'll move the rectangle lower. Directly in compose mode. Ok. And I add a blur filter. Not too much, ok. Really interesting effect, what do you think? 
I have already made many tutorials regarding visual effects here on Dreams, but surely new ones will arrive. I'm studying the luminosity masks and I'm trying to understand what could come out interesting. My advice is obviously to stay connected to the channel. Well, dreamers, we have reached the end of another fantastic tutorial. I hope it will be useful for your future projects. Maybe this is the last video of the year. The Christmas holidays are coming and I'll probably be too full to think about anything other than food and wine. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! As always, I invite you to write in the comments if there is something that is not clear to you. I will be here to help you, if you want to delve deeper into any particular topic. Thank you so much for watching and...